Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we'll be going through the using application tracking with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so here is our example on the slide. And in the slide, there's a few different things I want to point out. VSREX1 is the device we will be configuring and it has three interfaces. One interface is pointed towards user one in the user zone, and another interface is pointed towards the syslog server in the server's zone. And the last interface is pointed towards the internet in the internet zone. So what we want to do here is we want to configure VSREX1 with application tracking, and we want to do that using JWeb. And what we want to track is we want to track application usage for users in the users zone. Then we want to send the syslog messages to the syslog server. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSREX1. All right, so here is the JWeb interface for VSREX1. And the first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and configure the security logging parameters. And that's going to be under configure, device settings, basic settings. We go to security logging turn security logging on, and then we need to configure a few different options. We can configure the logs to come from a certain source address or source interface. We can specify the source address here, and that's the address of the interface that is pointed towards the syslog server. Then we want to set the format to SD syslog. We can leave the transport protocol blank. It'll use UDP by default, or you can select UDP, TCP, or TLS. And then we need to add a new syslog server. And we name this syslog server. We call this app track logs. And then we can save at, you know, we specify server IP address. The type we can set to structure web standard. For this, we want to set to structure. And then we set the IP address of the syslog server. And click OK. Then we need to make sure we click save, or it's not going to save what we just did. And now we need to configure app track itself. We go to security objects, app tracking, and app track by default is enabled. And so what we need to do here at a bare minimum is specify the zone. So we select the user's zone. And then if we want to, we can change different parameters. By default, the first update interval is set to one minute and the session update interval is set to five minutes. And we can change that. We can set this to log as session is created. So as soon as the session is created, we're going to send a log. And then the session update interval by default is set to five minutes. And what that means is if a session lasts longer than five minutes or at least five minutes, we're going to give a session update message, send that to the syslog server with the information of the session, such as the bytes used, the packets as well. But in this case, let's go ahead and reduce that to two. Since this is a learning byte, we want to hurry things along. And so what that means is if a session lasts longer than two minutes, we'll send an update message and click save. That saves that configuration. However, we still need to commit the configuration. And with this, I'd like to do a compare to make sure this is what we're expecting to see. Now, this might not be that useful if you're not too familiar with the CLI. Myself, personally, I'm very familiar with the CLI, so I like to see something like this. So if you're familiar with the CLI, this is a great tool to look at to see what's being pushed out to the actual SRX device. So we can click close, then commit, or we can just click the commit button here to commit the configuration. So that has committed successfully. So let's go ahead and jump to the user one device and start generating some traffic. Okay, here is the user one device. Let's open a web browser and then let's open a web page. And so we're generating some traffic here. So let's go ahead and jump to the syslog server and have a look at the syslogs that are being received. All right, here is the syslog server. Let's go ahead and do a TCP dump on the interface that is pointed towards the VSRX1 device, that's ENS160. And we're going to use the source option so we only see messages from the VSRX1 device. And we're also going to use the verbose option to look a little more into those syslog messages as they show up. All right, so this is a good sign. We have some AppTrack syslog messages showing up. See, there was an AppTrack close and a bunch more AppTrack creates. And if we let this go for a minute, we'll be able to find a, an AppTrack update as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video until an app track update shows up. And then once that happens, I'll stop the feed and we can look at the different messages and see how they look from there. Okay, so we have had a create, close, and also update message show up in the feed. So let's go ahead and look at those individual messages. The first message you'll see at the very bottom 
is an abstract session close message. And in here, you're going to have different things such as, you know, first of all, the timestamp, where it's coming from, where it's going to, the ports used. We can see that's 10.5.5.1 syslog port going to 10.5.5.100 syslog port. And then we can see the facility is user, severity info. And then we can get to the meat of the message. We can see that the reason there was a close was a TCP client reset, a source address, which is user one, source port, destination address, which is something on the internet, destination port 443, so we know that's HTTPS traffic, Service name, Junos HTTPS, see that there. Application SSL, nested application, Salesforce. So we know that's using the Salesforce nested application. NAT source address, 10.100.100.1. We know source NAT is happening. We see the NAT source port. Destination NAT address. We can see the destination NAT address being used for the session as well as the port. Source NAT rule name, destination NAT rule name. Now, we're not actually doing destination NAT on this device itself. Protocol ID is six. Policy name, source zone, users, destination zone name, internet, session ID, how many packets from the client. In this case, it was 26 packets, bytes from the client, 2101, packets from the server, 25 bytes from the server, 5068, elapsed time, 116 seconds, no username or roles, we're not using user firewall, no encryption, profile name, there's no profile or rule name in that regard, routing instance is the default, destination interface name equals giggy002, uplink incoming interface name, not applicable, uplink transmit byte zero, uplink receive byte zero, category web, subcategory applications, there's no advanced policy-based routing, as well as no multipath rule name. So there's a wealth of information in there. That was a lot to go through there. And then if we scroll up, we can see, see a volume update message. Here we go. So a volume update message is going to have very similar information. And so I'm not going to go through everything in this, but the whole idea with this is this session has lasted longer than two minutes. And you can see in this message, you can see the elapsed time set to 120. So that's two minutes. So basically what happens here is, hey, it's been two minutes. Let's give an update for this particular session. Now, this is a different session than the other session that we saw. So you may recall the other session only lasted 116 seconds. So there would be no volume update message. So basically here, we're just going to say, hey, here's an update. This is how many bytes we use, packets, and other things going on with the session. So we look at a session create message. It's going to be very similar. Not as much information, but it's going to have similar information of what's going on. Obviously, there's not going to be a lot of packets or anything going on because this session just was created. So there's no packets or bytes information. But the other stuff is there, such as the source net, uh, source address, destination address, protocol, application, nested application, things like that. So let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface and let's go to the monitor workspace. And then we can go to security services, application tracking or app tracking, I guess. And we can find out some information about those different sessions. And you can see here we can select different criteria to filter by. Then we can also look at cumulative statistics or time interval statistics. In this regards, there's really not going to be much difference there since we just barely set this up. But you can look down at the different protocols being used. And some are marked as unsafe, low, critical as far as the risk level. You see the name, number of sessions, session percent, traffic, and traffic percent. So this will allow you to break it down. Now, the cool thing about this is you don't get this information like this in the CLI. So this is something very specific to JWeb that you can get this information. Now in the CLI, you can get some information about the number of session creates, updates, and things like that, but you're not gonna get a breakdown of actual applications, number of sessions, and risk factor as well. And we can also switch to a graphical output, and we can look at the top applications. It's gonna show the top three applications. Here you can see DNS, then NTP, and then Salesforce in that regards. And you can also on the right, you can specify the chart type, so we can change this to pie chart, click refresh display, and we see a pie chart instead. And then we can just change by display type. We can say session percentage, refresh display, and give us percentage of sessions. And then we can switch back to grid if necessary and look at the grid information as well. So that does bring us to the end of our learning bite. In this learning bite, we demonstrated how to configure application tracking using JWeb, and then we demonstrated how to verify application tracking using JWeb as well. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, 
the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.